Great. Thank you so much. I am honored to be here to um, present the keynote for EMWCon 2023. Um, I am Cindy Chickalese. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I know most of the people who are in the room, but there's a few new faces and I don't know who's online and who will watch this later. So I am Cindy Chickalese. I am a principal engineer at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, working in the platform engineering team, which is um, one of the teams that has primary responsibility for um, the MediaWiki core code base. Um, also a board member of the MediaWiki stakeholder group. Um, I have been involved with the MediaWiki since 2008 when I worked for the MITRE Corporation, um, which is a federally funded research and development center. And I was working at that point on a robotics project where um, I was doing some embedded software development for large unmanned ground vehicles. And we used Robopedia as a wiki internal to MITRE to record um, information, knowledge about our robotics project. And um, thank you. And um, became interested in the wiki and knowledge management um, in addition to the robotics work I was doing and transitioned onto the team that um, were for about 10 years at MITRE, I was involved in um, maintaining our um, MediaWiki infrastructure along with other team members. Um, we had a, a, development, um, in, a development wiki farm, staging wiki farm and, and a variety of um, production wiki farms also um, developed and maintained a suite of extensions that I still maintain as volunteer on the side to this day. Um, so was involved in the out external, the non-Wikimedia media wiki world for about 10 years um, before I um, was lucky enough to go inside the fold and um, join the Wikimedia Foundation first as a product manager. I thought it would be sort of cool. I thought, um, we desperately needed a product manager for MediaWiki. Um, and so I joined the foundation as a product manager, did that for a couple of years, realized almost from the first day that I missed being an engineer. Um, so I was very fortunate to be able to transition back into a, a principal engineering role at that point. So I am now a principal engineer at the Wikimedia Foundation and a couple of years before joining the foundation, I also joined the MediaWiki Stakeholder Group, which is a wonderful organization. If you go to the MediaWiki.org media, and um, search for MediaWiki Stakeholder Group, we have an element chat. We um, have monthly membership meetings where people um, talk about current events with MediaWiki and also answer questions. Um, and um, we also, have been involved in helping to support and coordinate um, the last few EMWCon and SMWCon conferences. So that's sort of like the background, how I got here. What I want to talk to you about today is measuring MediaWiki usage. Um, the basic question I'm going to be talking about is who's using MediaWiki? And how can we tell who's using MediaWiki? Um, customer number one for MediaWiki is, of course, Wikimedia projects, Wikipedia. MediaWiki was, was created to support Wikipedia, and it um, has in it um, many features in the code to support use of MediaWiki at that scale, at a, at a massive scale to support um, lots of editors, lots and even more readers of the content. Um, but because it was made available to the world as an open source project, in addition to that, there are a number of people outside of the Wikimedia movement who are using the MediaWiki software as well. Many of them are in this room or are listening online. Um, the vision statement for the Wikimedia Foundation is imagine a world in which every single human can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. And that's an admirable and very broad goal. Um, most of the knowledge that is managed within Wikipedia and the other Wikimedia projects is knowledge that's considered um, to be Wikimedia knowledge is the way I'll call it. Things, you know, 
there are notability standards, there are other bars one must cross in order to be able to have the data incorporated in those resources. And I'll argue that there's more knowledge in the world than fits inside of Wikimedia resources. And most of the people in this room know that because they're using MediaWiki for their own uses as well and um, storing much knowledge that they don't want to put in, media, in, in Wikimedia sources. Um, in other words, they're not trying to um, because they have either because privacy constraints or it's not notable enough for the whole world to want it, but very, very appropriate and important to people who need to use it. So then the question is, who is using MediaWiki? So I'll take a little bit of time to just talk about who is usage information important to? Who would benefit from knowing a little bit more about who's using MediaWiki? Um, and I'll speak in my day job role as a principal engineer for the platform engineering team working on MediaWiki core. It does help us to know when planning features when um, supporting different features and deciding whether we want to continue to support features, um, it's helpful for us to know not just what the media wiki, what the Wikimedia, sorry, it, the words, <laughs> what the Wikimedia use case is, but also since the software is made available um, as open source software, are particular features being used by others? Um, Extension developers, I'm also, um, as I said, in that category, I've developed extensions. I continue to main, uh, maintain extensions. I'll use um, Pluggable Auth, one of the extensions that I developed and continue to maintain. I'll use that as an, as an example throughout the talk. Um, extension developers need to know who are using their extensions so they know they want to continue to support um, they might, be, I constantly have questions for um, the end user. Of, would it be useful to have this feature in my extension? Is anybody going to use it or should I, should I stop, you know, with and resources to maintain extensions? Where should I focus my energy? Product managers, you know, both within the Wikimedia Foundation as well as product managers working um, on different um, consulting organizations, working on deciding what features that they want to focus on, um, again, would be helpful to know. Um, there isn't, as far as I know, really good sources of marketing information as far as how MediaWiki is used that could help inform some of these choices. Um, those who are administering either single Wiki infrastructure or um, wiki farm infrastructure would be helpful to know how folks are using uh, media wiki certainly the end user who's trying to decide um, what how they want to make use of media wiki what extensions they might want to use in their end product of developing a knowledge management application and then executives who are making funding decisions as far as what to support um, where should their resources go? What should they spend time, money, resources on in developing? Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about different sources of MediaWiki usage information that exist today and um, also where there are gaps in that information, where we could use additional information. And there's a balance always between privacy for those who are using the software and may not want to share how they're using it versus the benefits to the community at large in us knowing more about how the software is being used. Um, so I'm going to talk about Pingback, which is um, a feature that's built into MediaWiki Core. I'm going to talk about information that lives on the extension pages within the MediaWiki.org wiki. I'm going to talk about several dashboards that exist that aggregate information that's available from other sources. Um, I'm going to talk about Wiki Apiary, 
which I've been very involved in in the last um, month or so, and um, which is a great resource, but also desperately in need of love. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about examining and comparing different wikis that actually exist out there to talk a little bit about um, a tool that I built that can help us get a little bit more information in comparison. And then we can talk a little bit about the future. So Pingback, um, and I do have a bunch of, I put the slides of this um, up on the wiki afterwards so that you can um, access the um, links and follow them. So, uh, hold on. There we go. Um, but you, if you go to MediaWiki.org to um, the WG Pingback um, man, manual page, it has this information. So built into MediaWiki core, and it's been there since um, 1.28, I believe, there is a capability to set a variable WG Pingback, a config variable, that will report um, to um, an event um, endpoint on MediaWiki.org um, information about a, an installation of MediaWiki. If you opt in, if you set WG Pingback to true, um, it will, um, it, the information that's stored in the database is a unique identifier for every wiki, um, what database version it's using, um, what MediaWiki version um, is running, PHP version, operating system, architecture, um, what hardware it's running on, and um, what web server, and the memory limit. So some basic configuration information about your wiki. Um, Pingback was added in MediaWiki 1.28. Um, it was update, updated in MediaWiki 1.31 to add a heartbeat every 30 days, and you'll see why in a few minutes. Um, but a wiki has to report out that it's still alive every 30 days for it to be included in the statistics. Um, each wiki has a unique ID that gets generated so that over time you can tell that, you know, with a third uh, ping back every 30 days, and also as you upgrade your wiki, you can tie that data together in the database and determine it's still anonymized because you can't trace the unique identifier back to the source of that wiki, but you can over time see what happens to a given wiki. Um, the WG pingback um, config variable, it defaults to false. So if you do nothing, um, your data will be will not be sent back. Um, it, the um, if you generate using the command line installer, your local settings file, it will generate WG pinback equals false. Um, if you use the web installer for MediaWiki, it will, it will create a checkbox on the web installer and it will by default have that box checked, which means it would set WG pinback to true unless you uncheck the, t the check checkbox. Um, I encourage people to set WG ping back to true on their wikis so that we can gather and gather more information. Um, and then on uh, pingback.wmflabs.org is a um, site that, um, here, let me click on that. So this is a site that shows the aggregated information over time and um, it generates a new data point on all of these graphs every week. Um, and we're going to go take a little bit of a dive into those graphs. Um, how do we get back? Okay. So, um, so pingback.wmf.labs will allow you to visualize the aggregate data over time that was captured through those um, pingback events. So the first graph I'll show you is just unique wikis. Um, there are, as of March 26th of 2023, um, according to pingback, 
29,126 unique wikis that have, are reporting data and are reporting that they are still alive. So um, I'll tell you a couple things about this graph that you'll notice. The first thing you're going to notice is at the very beginning over here, um, there's the big <laughs> cliff. Um, that's when the heartbeat was added. Before that date, all of the data, once a wiki reported that it was alive, it, there was no way to know that it was no longer alive. So up until that point in um, 2018 in MediaWiki 1.30, um, it was that graph was just continuing to grow, grow, grow. So we added a 30-day um, heartbeat, and you can see that the graph plummeted down to less than 10,000 wikis at that point, and it's been growing back ever since. Um, the other <laughs> interesting feature of this graph Sometime in the fall of 2020, deep in the first year of the pandemic, somebody decided to spin up 40,000 media wiki instances. I can't say for sure that they were trying to do it because they wanted to ruin my beautiful graphs, but I feel like I have communication with this person somehow. Um, they either spun up 40,000 unique video wiki instances or they spun up and then cleared the database of a single wiki instance 40,000 times or some something in between. Um, and that lovely little spike shows up in every graph that we're going to look at. So um, this is probably the graph that I look at the most often um, from these and it shows per MediaWiki version, um, how many wikis there are. And so you can say, see as of March, I'm um, sorry, April 2nd of 2023, we have almost 8,000 instances of MediaWiki 1.39 out there. Um, after that, 6,000 instances of 1.35. Does anybody have a guess as far as why 139 and 1.35 would be the top two? Go ahead. They are the LTS versions. They are the currently supported LTS versions, yes. And most, I would argue most, enterprise MediaWiki users tend to stick with the LTS versions. What's yes. LTS? Uh, long-term support. Thank you for asking that question. Yes, LTS are long-term support. Um, and the... Um, most recently expired, what's the word? Um, the most version, uh, LTS version was 1.31. Um, 1.35 is going to no longer be supported sometime within the next year. Um, 1.39 is the current LTS version, and the next LTS will one, but be 1.40. Do you have, does there sound how many people are running like a clone of the current latest that isn't tagged as a specific release? So if you look in here, you can see 1.40. There are 340 um, instances of 1.40. And there are 33 instances of 1.41. So the way it works is the currently released, when we cut a branch, I got to be really careful because this gets really the words. I will trip over my words. When we cut the branch for 1.40, which is going to be the next release that's going to be released in the coming months, um, and that 1.40 branch branched just within the last month, um, all of the Wikimedia wikis um, then start running 1.41 because there are weekly the train runs weekly there are weekly releases of 1.41 1.41 wmf1 wmf2 wf3 it changes every week so likely the 33 wikis that are reporting here running 1.41 are the first ones that got the 1.41 train um and the other ones, remember, because there's a 30-day heart heartbeat ping, some of the, them have not yet reported that they've been upgraded to 1.41, and so they're still reporting at 1.40. But there are also some other hardy souls who choose to run 
1.40 from you know the master branch, the main branch. Um, and so that number is going likely something more than just Wikimedia wikis. Um, and we will see, we see that um, there's sort of a characteristic curve. And so this little um, beige-ish, greenish khaki line here is 1.35. And you'll notice it reaches a peak. Um, these um, vertical lines are, um, I edit a metadata file every time there's a new media wiki release that will create a new line here showing um, when things are released. So it is likely that when it reached its peak here, 1.35, that the next LTS, 1.39, was released. I believe that's what that peak is. And then 1.35 usage starts falling. And, and actually, that might be when 1.36, at any rate, it falls. But it, but it stops at a certain level and stays at that level because it is still an LTS. And so a lot of people are still running that 1.35 LTS. But then the other, the non-LTS version sort of go up and down. And then some people still, they'll install 1.38 and they will not get around to upgrading. And it will, so there will always still be some. But now you see this orange line here starting to raise. That's 1.39, the next LTS. And right around here, it actually um, reached a point where it um, exceeded 1.35. And then you'll also notice over here that our friend who spun up 40,000 instances did it with MediaWiki 1.34. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, you can see um, that most people, 27,757, excuse me, most wikis are running MySQL. Um, there are some running SQLite and some running Postgres. Um, those are the only three databases currently that are in MediaWiki core. Um, and our friend spun up 40,000 instances of Postgres. If you look at the, the graph, it looks like that, but the data table isn't it showing 400 and something? 40,000? Uh, well, 400, let me go back. Right now, oh, on okay. March 2nd, right. there are 420. But back in the fall of 2020, briefly, there were 40,000 instances of Postgres. Um, and the next is PHP versions. You can see by far most people are running PHP 7.4 still, 14,000. But there are an increasing number of people who are using PHP 8. And that's rising. Um, and then a de decreasing usage of um, PHP 7.3. So this gives you a sense, you know, if you're trying to decide what PHP version, well, you should probably support and what the um, deprecation schedule is for, for PHP. But you can also see whether it's likely that, um, you know, is there anybody running PHP 8.2? Is it likely that it would work? Um, and our friend was, um, I believe. Um, which, which operating system, again, by far, Linux, um, 27,308 27, instances running Linux, except our friend was running FreeBSD. Um, memory, not surprising most people running um, on 64, I'm sorry, um, not memory, um, architecture. Um, the 64-bit architecture, um, most people, um, including our friend. And um, uh, architecture, um, most people running x86-64, except our friend was running AMD-64. Um, web server, most people running Apache, including our friend. I was actually a little surprised that Nginx is so far down there. Um, 
And the last statistic is memory limit, which most people are running between 64 meg and 128. But our friend is between 256 and 512. So that's sort of a tour of the pingback statistics. And they give you sort of a gestalt feeling of, of um, how people are running MediaWiki. For those people that have WG pingback enabled, does anybody in this room know whether on their wiki farms they have WG pingback enabled? I see a lot of confused stares and no, no hands raised in the air. Interesting. Um, um, WG pingback, since it's a you know, in less outgoing requests of that nature are, are um, blocked for some reason, um, would be able to operate sending the information out through a firewall. Um, but unclear whether people have it configured that way. Um, so the code that generates the um, points on those graphs is available um, on GitHub. You can see it, um, just a bunch of SQL queries. Um, the annotations that I mentioned where I edit a page on Meta um, every time there's a new MediaWiki release or security release, um, that's um, the graph annotations link there. Um, currently, um, the code in core that that generates these um, events that um, re are recorded in this database are using an old um, event logging endpoint that will likely need to be upgraded in the future, the infrastructure for it. Um, strengths of pingback, a pingback are that it gives us some basic version and configuration information and is generally privacy preserving, you know, it's all anonymized aggregate data. But it tells us very little about, except for, you know, what we just saw, that, you know, what are the configuration settings? We certainly know what WG pingback is set to true for these. But other than that, what, what um, configuration globals are set for a particular wiki, we don't know. Um, it tells us nothing about how MediaWiki and the extensions are installed. Are they installed from the tarball? Are they installed from Git? Some other mechanism is is it a dockerized environment we know none of that um, and it tells us nothing about the extensions and skins that are loaded on those wikis and tells us nothing about the usage is what is this wiki a toy wiki for 40,000 toy wikis that somebody spun up or is it an actively used wiki with lots of editors with lots of readers we don't know from this information um, so what if I want to know more information about MediaWiki extensions and skins on um, and their usage in wikis? For example, let's say I'm trying to choose extensions um, that I want. I'm sure just about everybody in this room has at some point gone, should I install that extension? Should I install that skin, right? You, you have to, and you want to know that it's that other people are using it, that it gets a lot of um, traffic so that you know that Generally, um, it's as bug free as possible, that it's um, robust, that you may want to know that it's maintained. Um, if you're an extension developer, you want to know, is anybody really using my extension? Um, that would be sort of, you know, if I'm spending my volunteer hours ex maintaining some code, unless it's useful for me, you know, is it also useful for other people? First of all, because it's personally gratifying, but second of all, I've got other things I could be spending my time on too, right? Um, is this extension actively maintained, sort of um, related to that first question, you know, should I use this? Um, it, it's committing to it. Um, and if, if your users start using it within your wiki, you'd like to know that it's, that if there are any bugs found in it, that somebody's gonna fix it. Um, Oh, from the perspective of MediaWiki releases, there are a number of, of extensions that are bundled in with MediaWiki releases, and it would be useful to know what the usage of particular extensions were if you were trying to make a decision whether you were going to bundle something. And it's not just the Wikimedia Foundation that bundles things. The different, um, um, the different what, what's the category for Canasta? The different deployment um, packages, Canasta, um, Meza, OpenCSP, 
there have been choices and there's a number of different ones. There's actually some tags now on MediaWiki.org that show which um, groupings um, different extensions are involved in. So um, it's helpful to know what the usage of an extension is if you're trying to make decisions about whether to include a particular extension in your bundle. <clears throat> so what's information that we can get um, or that we can see on MediaWiki.org? Um, MediaWiki.org has extension pages. They're maintained by extension authors and other volunteers who come and update information. I love it when I see a volunteer come and edit the extension page for one of my um, extensions to help clarify some of the wording or to add another use case or add some additional information. Very much in the wiki spirit, collaboratively edited pages, and it's wonderful. Um, there is information now that is mined from extension.json and um, from the extension distributor site for um, the info boxes of the extensions on MediaWiki.org. We are fortunate to, enough to have Brian Wolf in the audience here. Brian, Gergo Tiza, and Sam Wilson all um, contributed to a tool, um, extension JSON uploader, which is amazing and which goes and um, mines um, extension, the extension.json file for all, um, all extensions that are currently listed both in, um, so the ones that are Garrett hosted as well as there's also a, um, a repo hosted by the MediaWiki stakeholder groups, the stakeholders group that lists extensions that are in a lot of other repos as well. And so those are indexed, those extension.json's are read. And so the info box information on MediaWiki.org, um, I think, believe that reads, runs every 10 minutes. And it generates a Lua table, which is um, on page module extension JSON. And you can actually go and look and see this huge Lua table that has information about all of the extensions. And then the Lua module um, extension then takes that information um, creates a couple, a number of different Lua functions that are then invoked from the um, template, the extension template um, that generates the info box. In addition, a very recent feature of extension JSON uploader is um, the page popularity.json, which is generated. It's a sub page of template extension, extension. I am not sure how often that is updated, but what it does is it takes in statistics from um, extension distributor and creates a JSON file so that now at the bottom of every info box is information that shows um, how often the extension is downloaded from um, ex using extension distributor. I'll note that extension distributor is only one, one way that people download extensions. This doesn't cap capture um, people who download directly from Git, but it is one me measure of how folks um, use. This is the um, info box from pluggable auth. Most of the information there is pulled from the extension.json file using um, the tool that I just mentioned. Um, when this was first um, deployed, the um, statistics, um, the download statistics, um, pluggable auth was the number one. I was shocked. I had no idea. <laughs> it, it, it's now, I think, template styles. Template styles and pluggable auth are jockeying for position um, between one and two. Um, so sadly, it's now the number two. That's amazing. And that makes me, as the maintainer of that extension, motivated to want to spend my free time working on that extension, right? That, that, just that one in the info box, incredibly motivating. I'll say that the very first time that I opened, uh, open sourced an extension um, on Garrett um, back in 2012, I want to say, was when MITRE first um, submitted their uh, they developed extensions for a number for some years before that, but then actually contributed them as open source. 
Um, I uploaded them to Garrett. I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning and my extension, one of my extensions had been translated into 11 languages. Oh my God, that was amazing. They love me. People, people care, right? So these are the kinds of things that will motivate extension developers to actually spend their time and um, continue to update their update their extensions. So, um, so this is huge. I, I think it's that's amazing and it's very helpful information. Um, so I'll move on from the extension pages. There are, as I mentioned, a number of different dashboards that have additional information about um, Wikimedia usage, media wiki usage, extension usage. Um, I, I'll just sort of present that, you know, the graf there's a Grafana dash, uh, site with Grafana dashboards um, that you can go to. These are some um, live updated statistics of um, Wiki usage of Wikimedia projects, but there is also within um, that Grafana dashboard that same um, extension distributor information um, as far as the download statistics um, from um, from extension distributor. Um, this is for one dot, the release of the RHEL 139 branch when it's all branches, the graph that's in the bottom left was timing out for me the other day. Um, so the top graph is a little bit more interesting if you actually look at all releases because it's got stacked bar charts of different releases. But um, if you do that, the one in the bottom left times out. Um, you can actually go to the GitHub mirror um, that mirrors the um, Wikimedia repos on Garrett. Um, and if you go there um, under graphs contributors, there are a number of different graphs that will also give you a different additional information about um, the, the extension and core support. Um, there's a site, I, I don't even know how you pronounce this, Biturgia, Biturgia, I don't know. Um, but the Biturgia, the whatever site, um, includes statistics about um, about um, contributors, developer contributors to the various different repos. And I always um, enjoy looking and seeing names that I recommend, uh, that I recognize from um, third party um, contributors um, being right up there with their contributions. Um, Dayan and um, Robert Vogel from Hello Welt. Um, are always up there as far as um, high contributors. Um, so that brings me to Wiki Apiary. Uh, Wiki Apiary is an amazing and troubled site. <laughs> um, it was created in December of 2012 um, by um, Jamie Thingolstad. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce his name. Again, things that you see re read, written that you never try pronouncing outside uh, out loud. Um, he maintained it, he created it and maintained it for a number of years. Um, he then moved on to other projects, and um, the Wikimedia, the Media Wiki Stakeholders Group um, agreed to take on management of it. Uh, we had it hosted inside um, on Wikimedia Cloud Services for a while. Um, it was consuming a lot of resources and it was um, consuming a um, domain name that um, which are present precious resources and um, decision was made to transition it um, within the last year i want to say um, off of um, the wikimedia cloud services to an external it's actually an azure site um, that process was not without um, pain that we have still not completely recovered from. Um, it is not fully functional. Um, so Wiki Apiary monitors wikis that have been contributed, that their URLs have been contributed either ma manually or there are a number of bots that go out there and find wikis, for example, all the fandom wikis as they're. There's a page, at least one page, per wiki that's created within wiki apiary and then there are two bots that are hosted by wiki apiary that scrape sites um everything has to be apiary and apiary is a um so everything is b related the bumblebee wiki 
weekly will hit every wiki that's active or that's not defunct um, within uh, that has a page within wiki apiary and it gets some basic statistics some of the things that pingback did not give us are provided um, by the scraping of wiki apiary there's also an audit b that runs every hour it picks 20 sites that have never been audited and 20 sites that haven't been audited recently and it goes to see if they're still alive and if they're not it will mark them as defunct those the audit b hasn't run for a while or hadn't run for a while um, and so there are a lot of sites that are not currently active that still have yet to be marked as defunct. Um, both of those scripts were dead for a while because of this hosting transition. Um, I We had a, what's called a, a um, code jam on my team. We do this, we try to do it quarterly um, where we work on some project for a week. Um, people can choose what project they wanna work on. And I chose Wiki Apiary um, last month because I, really wanted to see it get back working again. Um, and so spent some time getting the, with colleagues, um, Bill Perkle, um, who's on my team, spent a lot of time with me as well. Um, and we worked to get the scripts um, up and working again for Wiki Apiary. Um, and then did a little bit of tweaking on templates. Um, the um, bottom right of your screen is a screen grab part of the main page of Wiki Apiary. I'm not gonna try and go to Wiki Apiary um, during this talk, first of all, because mm -hmm. it's very slow and um, sometimes non-responsive. Um, and you also have to be careful about which wikis you clicked on because I was clicking through the wikis on the main page the other day and wound up with one with some very rude language. So <laughs> I'm not gonna do that in a live presentation. Um, but the main statistics um, are shown in a little box on the main page. I would take them all with a grain of salt. It currently says that there are 45,000 active sites. I do know tracked extensions, 18,000 is not correct. It's double counting extensions. So that number is probably 9,000 or less. Um, one of the issues that I found was, um, I tried to, re so Wiki Apiary makes extensive use of Semantic Media Wiki. It is, it, it is a very heavy, it is using Semantic Media Wiki for more than Semantic Media Wiki can handle. Um, and there are a lot of things that really need to be done fundamentally to the model. But I tried rebuilding the Semantic Media Wiki statistics as part of the upgrade. We, we One of the other things that we did um, in the last month is that we were running um, one Media Wiki 1.30, I think it was, it was it wasn't even 1.31. So I upgraded to 1.31 to 1.35 to 1.39. Broke some things in the mean in that there used to be tabs on each of the pages to make things look visually better. But when I upgraded the upgraded the foreground skin, it broke that. Um, I tried to rebuild the semantic statistics, and after something like five days, it was only four percent through the semantic statistic rebuild. And so I in the interest of being able to run other things, stopped that process. Um, I firmly believe that the site needs to transition to using something, either dramatically change the way it's using Semantic Media Wiki or use something else. And um, I will say that as part of what it being this being transitioned to the Media Wiki Stakeholders Group, um, Mark Hirschberger from the Media Wiki Stakeholders Group did talk to Jamie Thingolstad, who said, if I had it to do all over again, I'm reporting this, I guess, third hand, but my understanding is he said if he had it to do all over again, he would choose not to use Semantic Media Wiki in the way it's being used. So, but of course, when it small started, it was much smaller, right? Who knew that it would be there would be so many sites and that it would be so successful? So, um, notice it says 45,000 active sites, whereas Pingback was reporting 27,000 or so. Um, so, if that is accurate, then um, it's, you know, it means that there are sites out there that are not reporting with pingback. At a minimum, it says that. And this is just a part of the main page, you know, showing some statistics about the different sites that are, you know, how often they're edited, um, 
how many of the pages are changing, how the user numbers are changing. So it's got a wealth of information in it. Um, I would love to get to the point where we can actually trust the information in it. Um, this is from one of the pages for, I don't know which wiki, but a page for one of the wikis. You can see that it tells you some usage statistics, the total registered users, the current active users, the number of administrators, how many article pages there are, how many images, the total number of pages. I will note that um, the number of article pages and active pages can get, because of how they're cal calculated, they can actually get inaccurate over time. And we noticed, for example, that on Wiki APRI itself, it was reporting that there were more article pages than there were actual pages on the Wiki, which is impossible. So there is a script you can run that will fix those in the Wiki. Um, and then total in edits, jobs, which I found was a little bit um, inaccurate when I actually tried to check. Um, and then at the bottom, it'll say when the information, this particular Wiki was up last updated on April 13th. Um, and then for each wiki, it also will list the extensions that are currently loaded on that wiki and which version. And you can click on each of those extensions and go to a page for the extension to see more information then about which wikis are using the extension, which is very interesting information. So, and, there, and it generates different graphs. So back again for pluggable auth, you can see, um, and this is very interesting to me as the developer of Pluggable Auth, that by far 90 or 79% of the people using Pluggable Auth are using version 5.7. 5 points, there was a dramatic change in um, Pluggable Auth between version 5.7 and version 6 um, that involved, you know, changing the configuration. It's, you know, it made it so that you could actually have use multiple plugins simultaneously. I happen to think that was a huge improvement in the extension, but there are not many people that are using um, version six yet, probably because a lot of the users of pluggable auth, uh, pluggable auth requires that you use a particular a plugin, authentication plugin with it. So it's sort of the glue code that makes it easier to use authentication plugins. I believe the most commonly used one is LDAP Authentication 2. Um, although I, I would uh, probably, I think OpenID Connect is, the, is either becoming more used or I, I would be interested to see the comparison and the usage numbers between those. I should probably go back and look at WPA Perry and see. Um, but LDAP Authentication does not yet, it should hopefully within the next month, but it does not yet support version 6 of Pluggable Auth. And so therefore that would keep a lot of people running version 5.7. So this is really interesting information. Um, version 7 has not actually been, um, been released yet. So the seven wikis that claim to be running version 7 are there is because I was playing around on my own wiki farm with a development version of Pluggable Auth. And those seven wikis are reporting that they're running version seven of Pluggable Auth. Um, it also gives a graph that shows the relationship between extension version and media wiki version. So you can see that, for example, many people who are running ver version 5.7 of Pluggable Auth are running it on media wiki 1.36, which is not even a supported version of media wiki anymore. Um, so this also gives you other information. So for example, if I were thinking I would, I'm planning to deprecate some features, um, in, um, one of my extensions or deprecate support for a particular version of MediaWiki, it would be useful to go to this and look and say, well, how many people out there are still using my extension with that old version of plug of MediaWiki? Um, there is also um, a rating feature um, where folks can actually, not a whole lot of people have rated the extensions, but this could be the um, groundwork for um, future um, extension store that has people be able to, you know, give some opinion about the utility of a particular extension. Um, I happen to like this because one of the, 
little tiny extensions that I haven't touched the code for in years, but I actually created the rating extension that creates those little stars and makes it so that you can actually use page forms to, well, actually, the, now page forms actually have stars, but before it did, you could use the um, semantic rating extension to um, be able to edit the, the star, stars. So at any rate, it's, I don't know how many people actually, other than Wiki Apiary, use that extension anymore, but I like seeing the stars. Strengths of Wiki wealth of information in it. Oh my gosh, so much. Every time I look at it and I think, oh gosh, we should really simplify this by just cutting this whole thing out. Then I start digging into the information. I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. Um, and there is a small but dedicated group of volunteers populating and maintaining the site. Now that it's back up again, well, the first thing that we found was when we made it available again is it absolutely got slammed by bots, brought it completely down to its knees again. Um, and so we've had to block. Brian, again, has been incredibly helpful, as has Mark Hirschberger, in keeping the site up and running. I'm sorry, Brian Wolf, that Brian. Not that Brian. Uh, thank, Brian Hildebrand is always helpful too. But um, at any rate, um, it so there are um, editors whom I do not know who they are, as is always true in the Wikimedia mo movement. There are folks that are going in and who are updating the templates on Wiki Apiary and um, making it more. Um, well, trying to fix some of the things that got broken in the upgrade and to um, make it more useful um and then a number of different bots that are doing things like archiving you know going to wiki apiary finding new sites and then archiving them to the internet archive um so that uses the wiki apiary data to use that as a pro as a byproduct um also some other um bots that are checking for activity and marking wikis on wiki apiary for how active they are as far as editing. So they might, so for wikis that are not defunct, they're still there, they're still accessible, but there might be some that haven't been edited in years and so marks them as inactive. Limitations of Wiki Apiary. Um, it doesn't know about a site unless, it's been, unless it was contributed. You have to go, somebody, either a bot or a person needs to go and actually um, uh, contribute. Um, it can only scrape wikis that aren't from behind a firewall because it, it, the call comes from Wiki Apiary. Um, there was UI breakage, breakage during the upgrades. Um, it is absolutely ab abusing semantic media wiki. There are frequent timeouts. There are inaccurate statistics. Um, rebuilding data might fix the product <laughs> problems, but um, it takes too long to rebuild the data. Um, I, I think we should probably try using Elasticsearch semantic media wiki backend, but um, that takes resources too. The scripts are really inefficient. Um, they hit the site multiple times to get different data when I think they could probably get it all in a single query. Um, it's also, it stores information on sub pages um, using a template invocation. Um, I would really like to switch it to using something like what was discussed earlier, um, actually storing JSON in slots associated with the um, page, I think would be a huge win. Um, you'd still have to then develop, you know, have some SMW properties related to the JSON information, probably, um, although there are other possibilities for that as well. And it's super popular with bots, it, it, which is a, both a good thing and a bad thing, right? Um, so it needs a model refresh. Um, I am going to be at the Wikimedia Hackathon, which is going to be in Athens in late May. Mark Hirschberger is going to be there as well. Um, Brian Wolf, I believe, is going to be there as well. Um, and there are a few people who may spend some or all of their time working on it with the APR there. If there's anybody listening who's coming who is interested in doing that, working on it, um, that could be a good opportunity to at least, I would like to have a discussion with the folks. So if anybody's out there listening, if you edit templates or um, have bots that run across Wiki Apiary, I would like to have a discussion about how we can evolve the site 
I don't want to do anything that's going to break people's existing. Well, maybe I do want to do things that are going to break people's existing usage of the site. Um, but um, I don't want to do it without discussing it with them first. OK, I'm rapidly running out of time, but I'm going to talk briefly about comparing wikis. There is an extension called version compare that I created several years ago to um, allow me to take two wikis and compare the extensions and skins that they ran as well as the base, you know, media wiki version, database version, um, PHP version, or the media wiki API to get information about those wikis. And so I can do side by side comparisons. I created it so that um, I could compare, for example, if I had a development wiki farm and a production wiki farm, and I wanted to know, am I actually running the same code on the two? I could compare a wiki and see whether they had drifted at all. Um, so the extension is um, uh, available from um, Garrett. It's got a page on MediaWiki.org. There is a patch. Am I out of time, or do I have like five minutes? Um, you can play around with it. I created a patch with new functionality just for um, this talk because there was information I wanted that it like the summary information um, that um, and I'll give you an example here, the bottom three lines of this table um, that was not generated by it. So looking at English Wikipedia versus German Wikipedia and um, and let me actually be brave and click on the link to go, and this is running off of one of my wiki farms on Wikimedia Cloud Services. You can see that it's a special page. You put the API URL of the two wikis you want to compare. Um, I'm probably going to change the wording of these three checkboxes because I'm the one who wrote this. And I have to stop and think, and I get them wrong every single time. They should be whether it shows something, not whether it hides something. I am an engineer. I am not a UI designer. If anybody also wants to make the user interface of this beautiful, it is not beautiful. Um, feel free to contribute. Um, so what it does is it, it uses the MediaWiki API, compares side by side. You can see that English Wikipedia versus German Wikipedia, they share 119 extensions and um, skins. Okay that they have in common. But English Wikipedia uses seven that are not used on German Wikipedia, and German Wikipedia uses one that's not. Um, I'm going to be bold and say I am going to uncheck hide extensions that match, which is going to show extensions that don't match, I hope. But I'm telling you, I need to change the UI. Um, and so if I click Submit, it's going to go and it's going to query. And so this is now showing extensions that are the same on both of these um, platforms. And so we can see all of the common ones. So now if I wanted to show, oops, go back and show, what are the differences between the two? I can do that by clicking this. And you can then see, do a side-by-side -side comparison of the extensions that they both have, or yeah, that they don't both have. I really need to ch fix those checkboxes. OK, so it becomes interesting then if you want to say, you know, my wiki, um, am I running what English Wikipedia is running? Am I running what this other wiki is? You know, so this, um, I compare English Wikipedia. So as you can look at all of the, well, you can either generate these yourselves by going to um, the link, or um, I'm going to go sort of quickly through some of these, and you can visit them later. Um, English Wikipedia versus Wik Wikimedia Commons. You'll notice um, they share a number of the extensions, but there are some that are on English Wikipedia and some that are on Commons. But then I compared, for example, um, the Mira He's, is that how we pronounce it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mary's wiki farm, um, the meta wiki on that wiki farm. And I noticed that there's 126 extensions on English Wikipedia um, and 111 on Mira He's, but there's only 68 in common. 58 that are on English Wikipedia that are not on Mira He's, and 43 that are on Mira He's but are not on English Wikipedia. Um, 
I compared the fandom community wiki. The fandom community wiki has 205 extensions and skins. Um, and only 27 are shared between that and English Wikipedia. Um, which begs the question, one of the things that um, people often say is that um, in enterprises that they use MediaWiki because they want to use the same software that English, that Wikipedia uses, right? Are they? I don't know. Um, so then I compared um, um, fandom, uh, the fandom community wiki and Mirahiz's Meta MetaWiki, and they also only have 27 in common, which is interesting. I think it's a different 27, though. Um, so I compared them. I, I started getting whimsical. The Magic the Gathering wiki compared to the fandom community wiki, and it there were 160. So then I compared um, the League of Leg Legends um, wiki, um, 184 in common with the Magic and the Gathering wiki. Um, one of my colleagues plays a cute little farming game called Stardew Valley and highly recommends their wiki. Um, it, um, when you with the Magic the Gathering wiki, um, they only have 11 extensions in common, but there's only 25 extensions loaded on the Stardew Valley one. And then I had to um, compare, of course, Animal Crossing, the big game during um, the pandemic, right? Um, there is Nookopedia, which Kevin Peravi, am I pronouncing his name correctly, was on a panel at last year's EMW Con, and he um, um, is instrumental in Nookopedia. And I compared that to, I found another, I think there are many Animal Crossing wikis, and um, there are only 31 extensions in common between the two of those. Um, and then I compared, um, so we'll hear a lot about Canasta in the next couple of days. Um, so the Family Search Wiki is a Canasta Wiki, and we also heard Charlie this morning talking about OpenCSP. So I compared um, the Family Search Canasta Wiki with the OpenCSP um, Demo Wiki, and Family Search has 97 extensions and skins. OpenCSP has 49. They share 26 extensions in common, um, but there's 71 extensions that are on Family Search that are not in OpenCSP, and 23 that are in OpenCSP that are not in Family Search. So questions that are still difficult to answer. What core features and configuration session the setting combinations are used? Um, and no, nothing reports that. Um, so what could we do to if we wanted to make more of that information available? If I have a particular extension installed on my wiki, am I using it? Um, I know that this was a question we had on our wiki farms at MITRE all the time. We wanted to perhaps undeploy an extension, but we weren't 100% sure whether we were actually using it or not. How can I find out if I'm actually using it? And if I am using it, am I using it a lot? Maybe I'm using it on one page and, you know, um, but right now you can't get that information easily. If I ex enable a particular extension, will it coexist with other extensions? Will there be conflicts with them? Um, we don't really necessarily know that um, unless somebody has documented that for a particular pair of extensions somewhere. If I decide as an extension maintainer, I just don't have enough time to, to continue to support all of the features in my extension, and I want to drop a particular extension, which does periodically come up with my extensions, and I would love to kill a feature. Who am I going to affect by doing that? Um, is anybody actually using that feature? Um, and that's true also about core um, core flags. If we want to kill a flag in core, is there anybody out there that's actually using it? Um, so what does that mean? You know, what could we do in the future? There has been a task open in Fabricator for years about having a pingback version two. Do we want to invest in that maybe? Um, we definitely want to renovate Wiki APR. I think Wiki APR is an amazing resource. It's got a wealth of information in it. It's just sort of broken. And we really need to spend some time making it better. And there's also been discussion for years about creating an extension store, a real extension store that has really useful information. Past, you know, MediaWiki.org is great, and it's a lot better based upon the extension JSON um, tool. Um, 
but it's still, you know, there are things that could be added. Maybe some of the things like ratings that are in Wiki Apiary, um, other, other features. There's a lot that we could do to get better information so that we could um, make more informed decisions going forward. And yeah, that's just, I had a bunch of backup um, beautiful wiki sites in case we wanted to visit any of them and compare them side by side, but we don't have time. But if anybody on a break wants to play with version compare and compare a few sites, we can. Um, so that's the end of my talk. I am sorry, I did go eight minutes over. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions if we've got time. So actually, we, we need to go uh, to the grill. I think uh, I was wrong. A lot of the meals, except for tomorrow's uh, breakfast, I think, is going to be uh, in the grill, not here. Okay. And they're waiting for us. So are they? there are some questions for you um, okay. ready. So maybe we can discuss it either uh, at lunch or okay. after, and then you can post it. Yeah, and I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll look, yeah. and I'll re put replies there. Awesome. Thank you, Cindy. Awesome. Thank you.